In this video, I'm going to take a look at the all-new Adobe Captivate's drag-and-drop feature. There's more to building e-learning than just creating a web page. If it was just making a web page, then, you know, it probably would be relatively easy to do responsive design, which, of course, that's what Adobe is attempting to do with the all-new Adobe Captivate. They're making it 100% responsive design. So features like drag and drop, where you need to pick up an object from one space and place it in another to evaluate the knowledge that you've learned uh, in your e-learning course, that can be a little more complicated than just building a website. So today I'm going to take a look at the drag and drop functionality. Specifically, we're going to take a peek at it under responsive design and decide whether what Adobe has done in the all new Adobe Captivate is ready for prime time. Let's take a look. To add the drag and drop widget to one of your slides, just simply click on the add new widget icon in your toolbar and select drag and drop down here at the bottom. Now at first glance, you might be thinking, wow, that's kind of crazy confusing. I don't even understand what's happening here. But what I found is that if you click on your properties inspector under visual properties, uh, if you turn off the background image, it makes it a lot easier to sort of understand what's going on here. I'm creating a little interaction that says, you know, which Captivate should I use? So I'm just going to call the title, which Captivate should I use? Question mark. And actually, I think I'd like to bump up that text a little bit there. I just think it's a little bit uh, smaller. So maybe I'll try one of the other headings here. That one's good. Heading number three in this case. Now, in this example, uh, what I'm going to be doing is uh, working with uh, drag and drops that don't match. There won't be the, the exact same number of drag objects as there is for drop targets. So drop targets will be two, and I can adjust that in the properties inspector here. First one is going to be for Adobe Captivate Classic. And the second one is going to be for the all new Adobe Captivate. So the drag objects I need to increase. I have a total of six, and that is the current maximum of this particular widget here. Now, in this case here, there are a few objects that, uh, that you might be interested in. The first one is the instructions, and that's right here. And you, you can customize that how you see fit here. So I'm going to type in drag and drop the workflows to which version of Adobe Captivate you should use. So, you know, you can go with the generic instructions, but I prefer something more specific to what it is that I'm doing here. And again, you know, maybe I want to go with a different body type or one of the choices that are here. Not crazy about that. Let's stick with that one there. That's good. Now behind the drag objects is this card, which you can turn on or off depending on what's happening in your background. So like in this case here, I've got a nice white background. Perhaps I'm going to, you know, replace that with a gradient or uh, an image or something like that. And uh, we want to just make sure that we can clearly see our cards down here. Uh, so that's what the purpose of the this card is here. But if you wish, you can turn it off if it's not necessary. And I think I'll do that in this case here. Now, the only thing that presently can be a drag object are images. So in this case, I prepared some images with text in it. That's sort of my workaround to the idea of having text as a draggable object. So if I click on the plus icon on this particular image, I can click on system. Again, I've prepared these on my computer and I can just navigate to where those are located and begin to add those one by one. So in this case here, uh, the infinite scrolling e-learning. And we'll do that for the second one as well, non-responsive design. 
these are all workflows that within Adobe Captivate, uh, you might have to choose one version over the other, classic or the all new. Okay, so now I have all of my drag objects and I'm just gonna click away from that final drag object to return myself to the widget properties here. We have a previous button, we have a next button. Again, these are all components that you can turn off. We also have a reset button and there is captions for this, much like there would be for quiz slides. But let's come back to that in a moment. Let's first of all configure our drag and drop here. And that's what this connections and this configure button are used for. Just below it, of course, you have the choice of the number of attempts. So you can have two attempts, single attempt, two attempt, three attempt, four, five, and a custom number of your choosing, or you can just set it up to be unlimited. For me, I'm mostly going to use drag and drop for practice questions or knowledge checks, if you will. So in all likelihood, I would make it unlimited, but that's entirely up to you. Let's configure which drop target goes with each drag card. So let's click on configure here and you see this little pop up, if you will. So infinite scrolling e-learning. Well, for that, you're going to need the all new Adobe Captivate, non-responsive design. We'll go with classic importing PowerPoint is also a classic feature, responsive software simulations, uh, all new Adobe Captivate, simplified interaction design, all new Adobe Captivate and video demo screen recording is obviously a classic feature. So we select that press save. So now we know the correct answers or the correct combination of drag and drops that can be used here. Let's go back to caption for a moment, click on show. So this is going to be sort of the familiar captions that you will see. And you can first of all, change their position. You can center them on the slide or you can place them down near the bottom. Uh, while this looks very modern and cool. And if you're doing sort of a standard slide design, I think it makes sense. However, if there's a lot of content on your slide and you're doing um, this sort of mobile view, I think you just hit the submit button. I think it makes more sense for the caption to be down near the bottom here. So let's return to desktop view, go down to the bottom here. And if you click on the caption, you'll see the multiple states that exist. The one thing I would like to see in the future is a try again state as well. I don't see that presently. Uh, maybe there's some way that that can be enabled, but if not, I'd certainly like Adobe to consider that so that, you know, if we have multiple tries like I have here, you'll get some sort of caption that says, Hey, you know, that was wrong. Try again, but I'm going to customize the appearance of these. The first thing I like to do, uh, Adobe likes to color code the feedback based on correct or incorrect, kind of like a stoplight. Green is go, red is stop, uh, yellow is caution, I guess. Uh, in this case here, I prefer to just go with white backgrounds on these captions because uh, quite frankly, someone with a visual disability may not be able to see the difference between green and red. And of course, you need a little more contrast than what they're providing here. With the text, of course, you might want to bump up the font uh, to something a little bit more significant, which is what I'm going to do as well. And we'll go ahead and adjust the options for the incorrect message. And we'll go to incomplete. We'll do the same for that. So again, there's quite a bit of customization. Sometimes you look at these and realize that they're, you know, at first glance, they may not be customizable or seem customizable. But once you actually get into a deeper dive on these interactions, there's quite a bit that you can customize. Okay, so this is pretty good to go. Let's do a preview, first of all, on our desktop. And before I do, I'm just going to move my play bar over here. This does afford you the opportunity to have uh, back and next button. So you could disable the play bar if you wish. So here we go. We've got Adobe Captivate Classic, all new Adobe Captivate, and we're just going to drag and drop these items in. I'm going to do it sort of randomly 
and uh, you know without any concern over what the actual correct answer is and go ahead and press submit. So here's where that try again caption would be quite useful. You could say, you know, incorrect, please try again. Uh, and then you would know to either press reset or it could reset for you automatically. So let's try and get it right this time. So infinite scrolling is definitely a feature of the all new Adobe Captivate. Non-responsive design is classic. Classic for importing PowerPoint. Uh, responsive software simulations, uh, all new Adobe Captivate. Simplified, and there we go. I think that's the correct answer. So now I get my that's correct. Click anywhere or press Y to continue. Okay, so let's take a look at what this looks like on device preview here. So I'm gonna scan the QR code and we'll take a look at it. So here's where I think drag and drop in the all new Adobe Captivate kind of fails us here. I can use my finger to scroll around in the drop targets up above. And, uh, and then of course I have my drag items down below. Now, admittedly, I'm using images of text Presumably, you know, you would use like images of, you know, objects or whatever, but I think they would still be very difficult to see. And I would say that what's happening down below is uh, more scaling than it is responsive design. The title and the instructions are certainly responsive design, but, uh, you know, the drop targets, having to scroll them, side to side again that's not really a responsive design solution and uh you know while i can drag these objects to the drop targets i really don't get to see them until i pop them in there so uh you know can i accomplish this um yeah you know so i will be able to perform the actions required of me here but uh, you can see where i think it's probably not going to work as well and i don't know what happened there i just took my instructions up to the top reset and submit here are uh, not scaling the text go ahead and submit and i get my caption but it's behind the buttons there so um I would give Adobe uh, not the highest marks for this interaction. I think that this can be improved upon. Um, I don't think this was ready for, for publication. Yes, I've customized a few things like my fonts and, and the idea of using images uh, that include text, but I still think that this could, been a, this could be improved quite a bit. If you thought this video was helpful, please like and share it with your colleagues. If you need help with Adobe Captivate, hire Paul for one-on-one -on -one instruction. Paul's goal is to focus on lessons based on your specific needs. Visit his website at CaptivateTeacher.com. And don't forget to subscribe to his YouTube channel.